The opposition haven't even talked about the economy, not in any real terms. All they talk about is foreign direct investment. No plan. There's no serious planning, and yet we need infrastructure. If we look currently at those countries which throw out the French, the Sahel Alliance, that is uh, Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger, they're already working on building their infrastructure. But what is the opposition on about? Human rights. What human rights are there for people who don't have jobs when the economy is, is in such a bad state? And even when you talk about democracy, what democracy is there when you don't control the means of production? It's a bogus democracy. So what we're saying to the Zimbabwean people is we must have a planned economy. Economic planning must be there and the economic plan must be shared among the people. We also say we must do away with privatisation. All those companies which were privatised must be nationalised again, but not with political appointees. We must have professional management running all those companies because the question of management is very important. Uh, it's crucial. We must have management regardless of their political, uh, personal political affiliation. We must have proper management in place, but the ownership must be national of the commanding heights of the economy. Most of all, the banking system must be either under direct control or, uh, or at least be under severe uh, financial controls because the banks don't produce anything. The banks buy and sell money. So one of the characteristics of the neoliberal uh, agenda which has been uh, in place since around 1980 worldwide is that you should do away with banking regulations. And as a result, the US economy, and it's the US which is at the center, is in severe problems because there's very little production. The US dollar is only strong because it became at an earlier stage the world trading currency, so they can print dollars. And people are getting wise to it throughout the world that the US dollar can no longer be the main means of, of, of trade. And this is what BRICS is about, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, plus, and you look at Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, and, and other countries. This is not a socialist thing, but it's the rejection of US, violent US imperialism and manipulation of the financial markets. So the world is now changing and we have to find our place in that. But we can only do it if we have financial planning and if we have national planning and the planning must be based on production. Why in the most simple terms is the USA collapsing and China is expanding? Very simple. The US economy is based on money uh, and the Chinese e economy is based on production. In China the four major banks which by, by the way are now the four biggest banks in the world are all nationally owned. They're sectoral banks, you've got the Bank for Agriculture, Bank for Industry, a Bank for Trade. So you've got four sectoral banks who are now the biggest banks in the world and they give loans at low interest rates to Chinese industry. In the US the banks are in total control. So if we want to move forward we need to look at production first and money second. 
and in my view I've been saying for a very long time the slogan which destroyed Zimbabwe if those of you remember in the early 90s was Kingdom Securities advert saying making money made, makes sense and Zimbabweans listen to that of course that sounds very good making money makes sense and of course by 2008 we were all billionaires but very poor billionaires because the money was worthless because we didn't have production our currency was not based on on production and uh, so the BF has not learned its lesson they bought in Bernard Gizero. they had the collapse of the economy so now they bring in uh, uh, and he carried out exactly the same kind of policies we as communists warned the people of Zimbabwe and the government very early don't bring back the Zimbabwe dollar until we've got production re-established no they didn't listen oh we need our own currency so we see what, what's happened hyperinflation so what we're saying is the immediate thing that we need is to go back to a multi-currency uh, regime with not the US dollar but the South African rand as the currency of reference and also we must go back to being able to even buy vegetables on the street through our phones because if there's a currency shortage yeah if we're using our phones to buy then we don't need so much currency so we believe that that's the immediate way forward abolish the Zimbabwe dollar at least until the time comes when we have restored production what is the next phase we need enough electricity and the other thing is we need water water and electricity are the two primary uh, things that we need in order to build production we need to rebuild the Cisco still now we can do 50-50 agreements with other countries if we don't have the capacity we can do 50-50 agreements with other countries but the 50-50 agreement should be directly with government or with provincial government not with a so-called indigenous entrepreneur if the indigenous entrepreneur wants to come in he must be part of the 49% not of the 51% which will be government owned or people owned so that's what we need to do to start to plan the economy so where do we go from that we need professionals to put together uh, a draft economic plan uh, based on the realities of what is known that draft economic plan should then be circulated around the country and be discussed at every ward level from the ward level we need then to organize meetings at town and district level where people from the wards go and they put their ideas in and they say they look at how the national plan can be implemented or where maybe it cannot be implemented where maybe the guys at the top don't understand the local conditions so people understand the local conditions so then from there we get a district plan we get a provincial plan because people from the districts now go to the province they create a provincial plan development plan or it may be a town plan city plan but every district every town every city must have a development plan and then finally we get the finalized national plan which then revisits the draft and uh, you know what whatever alterations are needed and the people own the plan it's something which everybody has had a say in and then we can start to to develop even these things of uh, ethnic differences people will feel that oh 
my area, let's say, is, is Kalanga. Let's, let's show what we can do as Kalangas or as Daos or whatever else. Let there be pride in their district, in their ethnicity, as part of the whole. Once we start production, a lot of ethnic division will automatically, without going any further, once people start working, a lot of the ethnic problems will already be overcome. That doesn't mean to say, of course, we don't still have to, produce, have to talk against ethnic division, but the economic basis for ethnic division will at least be partly o overcome by having that national plan. So we're calling for national planning. If we have a national plan, we can then decide where we want uh, to work with a foreign country or a foreign company, not for them to come in just freely and do what they want, to dig up our minerals, not to produce anything, uh, and just to take the minerals out, out, of the, out of the country. They have to come in on our terms, if we need them. If we don't need them, all the better. If we do need them, they must come in on our terms. And they must agree to our labour laws. This thing that uh, can, uh, companies, both indigenous and foreign, and especially looking at Chinese companies, can come in and do what they want. No, we, we, we can't allow that. Uh, by the way, I, I work in Botswana for a Chinese company myself. I'm a builder by trade. I worked on a roads job, uh, building roads in northern Botswana. Um, one of the things, there weren't that many problems. Why? Because the Botswana Labour Office is very strong. So as much as people may not like the, the, the Chinese, you'll find that if the Labour Office put their foot down, that they will agree to what is done. And if they don't want to agree, then they must be thrown out and the contract given to someone else who will agree to, to our Labour laws. So some of the problems are of our own making, in that we don't have strong trade unions a lot of the time to make sure that labour laws are adhered to. Uh, and in, in our view as the Communist Party, uh, the trade union movement has been far too interested in pushing a political agenda, which is actually a pro-imperialist agenda, because uh, as much as ZANU-PF got in with the aid of the imperialists, once Mugabe sent troops to Congo, he fell out with them, and so they wanted an alternative imperialist front. And I'm sorry to say with, to those of you with a triple C MDC background, that as much as the idea for the MDC in the 90s was, uh, was pro-worker, was opposed to ESAP, by the time the MDC was actually formed in late 1999, it was, it had changed. Uh, Eddie Cross was a neoliberal. He was the first, your first economic uh, advisor. And so from the, from the very beginning, MDC became a tool of the imperialists and of the white farmers. And as we know, the Zonal PF is totally corrupt. They're, they're only in it for, for themselves. We need a new party. We need a new mass party. Now, the Zimbabwe Communist Party sees itself as a vanguard party. You can not only join our party as a full member once you've gone through induction I'm not saying everybody must become a communist, but we believe that our policies are clear. We know which way we're going, especially in this changing world where the US is going down, Russia and China are coming up, BRICS is coming up, uh, countries in West Africa, in Latin America are throwing off the 
chains of US imperialism. So we now have to find a way in Zimbabwe. We need to create a mass party, a mass labor organization of workers and peasants, which will now take over from both Zona PF and Triple C. We don't want to make any bones about it. We have to go forward. Thank you very much.